All right. So last night I was reading up on compliant mechanisms, which are devices that use uh, a, an object's mechanical properties in order to build mechanisms. So instead of having a joint where you have you know a hinge that bends, you have a member that flexes, and you can make structures that are rigid in some dimensions and flexible in others and compliant and you know you can do make things like functional pliers and all sorts of crazy things like that. What it is is a compliant mechanism that is a gripper. So you can put something in there and it'll get actually a really high force. I can put that in there and and it breaks the chalk. And this is something that me and Riley have been interested in for a long time. Basically, ever since we learned about the up truck, um, which was an old truck that came out of a company in Brazil, which was entirely cast basically out of polyurethane. And it used the shape of the polyurethane to guide how the truck leaned and moved. And uh, that had some real appeal to us because. I don't know, something about it was just, just really grabbed us. And we've been trying to come up with similar ideas like that for a long time. And last night, I came across this mechanism, a compliant mechanism called a cross-link pivot. And I, and the first thing I did when I saw it was, I texted Riley and I was like, I think I can make a truck out of this. And like an hour later of drafting, I had some, some models and some, uh, a couple renders I, I did. And then I actually uh, printed it out. And this is what, this is what I came, came up with. So this is what I've come up with. And you can see it turns and pivots on these springs. So this front spring member, they cross. So it's, a, it's the cross spring pivot. Um, so this front one's bending up, or yeah, it's flexing up, the other one is flexing down, or the other way around. The, uh, one of the limiting factors of this design is the pivot point of this mechanism is um, about where the spring members cross. So there's, so this distance from the center of the axle to that cross is the axle offset. And so I've had to, if, if you look, the, sp the spread of the springs is wider at the base than it is at the top, and that's an, that's an attempt to move the pivot axis closer to the axle. So, um, discounting anything pretty crazy, um, these trucks, any truck using this design is going to have an offset pivot and feel like, a, you know, have a TKP offset pivot feel, um, or like, a, or like a rake truck, um, which is all right. Um, it's just, it's just, you know, you can't, it'll be a lot harder to make a rakeless design with this. It's actually surprisingly stiff in vir virtually all the other directions besides the pivot dimension. It's because the springs are actually uh, bars. So it's six millimeters wide and 22 millimeters long. And so because of that, um, like it doesn't, it won't twist, really. Um, it it doesn't move up and down a whole lot, and it doesn't move laterally. I was thinking it would move laterally the most, but I think it moves laterally, like almost the least. Um, so yeah, so <laughs> it really just moves along the pivot dimension. So you can see the springs are swept back at an angle like that and that is what creates the uh, the pivot angle of of the truck and so it didn't turn out to be as much as I was hoping because they the the axle when it moves up and down it moves really close to vertical and it really needs to be moving more at an angle than it is so in order for this design to work it's gonna need to be swept back even more than it is so the issue is the more 
angle you give the trucks, the more cantilevered out it's going to get. And if it gets cantilevered out too much, what's going to happen is it's going to get weaker against holding up the rider's weight. So you can see I, I'm, I'm, I am able to move it up and down a little bit. And I think a little bit is good, but more than a little bit risks um, problems. <laughs> so that's one limitation where I'm dealing with how you'd have to deal with if you're trying to take this further. So another thing is it's compact in some ways. So for instance, this is kind of actually a short little truck. But if these spring members get bigger and longer and it gets splayed back more, then I, I think it could start taking up more and more space. So right now it seems kind of small, but by the time you make it overbuilt, um, I don't know, I'm not sure it'll be small anymore. Um, but that's making it out of plastic. I think plastic's a pretty appropriate material for this because it makes, you know, it's gonna give it a nice comfortable damp feel, which would be really nice. But um, you could keep it a lot more compact, making the spring members out of, uh, out of stainless steel. So, um, oh, and you can see it's, it's, a, it's got nice energy return too. That's pretty nice that one of these is loose. Okay. Um, one other issue I'm having at the moment, oh, you can probably kind of see it's starting to get stress marks along here. Um, when you bend it, it kind of, for a long portion of the, spr the spring, it's, it's doing a gentle, nice little curve, but near the top here, it is kinking a little bit. So this is definitely not optimized uh, for distributed load. Anyway, that is the cross spring pivot uh, adapted as a simple longboard truck. Um, I think it shows some promise for its simplicity. Um, also, this is, a, uh, this is actually really, there's a lot of research papers on this pivot that you can just read and look up and they've got all sorts of numbers and figures and math you can apply to it. Um, so that's kind of cool if you're going to take an engineering approach to producing one of these. Um, but I think it's got, I think it has some promise and it has some challenges. Um, and uh, definitely a cool little idea. It would be nice to see if it could go anywhere. So there we go. Longboard technology over and out.